Hello guys, welcome to another discussion on strength of materials. But for today's lesson, I am going to teach you the concept and the procedure on shear stress. Okay, so as what I have said, we have uh, different types of stresses. We have normal stress, we have shear stress, and we have bearing stress. But in normal stress, we are dealing with the stress in, on the area perpendicular to the load, perpendicular to the external force. But in shear stress, it is the intensity of internal force that acts on the surface tangential or parallel. Okay? So, that is the area, stress in the area parallel to the force, the internal force or the external force. Now, now, let's try to analyze this figure. We have a bar. Okay, then we have a load P. So, um, the pin acts as a resistance to the load P. Okay, without the pin, obviously, our bar will easily um, fail or break. Tama? Ang pin ang nag-hold sa bar at saka this metal. So, therefore, if we have external force P, then there is also a reaction or a force acting at the cross section sa pin. Okay? And that pin there experiences shear stress. Okay? Due to internal force V. Again, this V here, it is the internal force due to our external load P. Now, due to the shearing stress, then we could have two type of shear failure. Now, we have single shear and we also have double shear. So, we can say that a shear is single when there is only one um, path of failure. So, in this case, isa lang yung um, area that would cause failure. Okay? However, in double shear, we have two areas that is prone to failure. Okay, we have another figure. So, if we try to analyze these two plates, this plate is being connected by a pin. So, this one, this is a pin. Okay? Due to the load P, then there's a possibility of shear failure at the, uh, or in between the two plate. Okay? At this point here. Okay? So, therefore, that is classified as single shear. But for double shear, if we have um, two plates connected, or there is another plate in between two plates, then these three plates are connected by a rivet or a bolt. Due to the applied load P, what would happen? There were two areas that are prone to failure, and that is this area here and this one. Okay, so there are two shear areas. Hence, it is known as double shear. Now, for shear formula, we have here, this is um, tau, that is equals to V, that is the internal shear, over the shear area. However, this area here, again, the shear area that is parallel to the internal force. Okay, always remember that. So, know how to differentiate between normal and shear. When we say normal stress, our area there is perpendicular. But when we say shear stress, our, our area here that is parallel to our internal shear. So now let's try to solve problem. We have example number one. Now we have a chain members one and two. So this is a chain. And chain members one, this one and two, are connected by a shackle and pin. So this one here, this is the shackle and pin. And if the actual force in the chain is 28 kilonewton, we have force actual force is 28 kilonewton and the allowable shear stress in the pin is 90 MPa. So this one, this pin here, I should have allowable stress of 90 MPa. It means that if our shearing stress of the pin is greater than 90 MPa, then therefore there would be a possibility of failure in the in the pin. Okay? So there's a possibility na mag-crack ang pin. So, here we have to determine the acceptable diameter D for the pin. So, we have to determine the diameter of this pin so that, again, the shearing stress would not exceed 90 MPa. And given that our load, actual load or actual force is 28 kN. 
Okay, let's try to compute. So, in that case, again, we have the formula for shearing stress that is shearing stress equal to the internal force over the A. Now, take note, we have two shear area. Now, this is classified as double shear, tama? Kasi since we have two shear areas. Now, there are two possible shear failure at the top, this one, and at the bottom. Okay, so we have, since our shear allowable here is 90 MPa, Okay, and we have MPA is Newton per mm squared. And that equals to our V here. Okay, our V is distributed sa dalawa. Okay, so therefore, our V that is um, 28 over 2. Correct? Okay, since our 28 here, if we sum up forces horizontally, our 28 is divided into 2 equal shear force. Okay? So, we have shear stress and we have shear stress here. Over the area of the pin, take note, we don't have the value of the diameter. So, we should retain um, the variable D. Now, we have the area of the pin, which is circle. We have pi D squared over 4. Okay, take note, we have 28 over 2. This is in terms of kilonewton. So, therefore, we multiply it by 1,000. And this now in terms of newton. So, we have... Our D, or the diameter, is equal to 14.07 mm diameter. Okay, now take note, we don't have um, commercially available um, pin that has a diameter of 14.07. So, there's a decimal 0.07. So, you can um, round it up into 15 mm diameter. Okay, so hindi mo dapat siya round down. Again, if the greater the diameter, that would generate um, greater cross-sectional area and the stronger the material would be. Okay, so this is now your answer. Okay, we have new example, example number two. A brass tube with an outside diameter of 2 inches and a wall thickness of, 30 of 0.375 inch is connected to a steel tube with an inside diameter of 2 inch. And the wall thickness of 0.25 or 0.25 inch by using a 0.75 inch diameter pin as shown in the figure. Okay, the shearing stress in the pin when the joint is carrying an actual load P of 10 kips. So when we see kips, it is kilopound. Okay, the length of joint required if the pin is replaced by a glued joint and the shearing stress in the glue must be limited to 250 PSI. So let's first understand the problem. So we have a brass tube, this one. The diameter of the outside diameter of the brass tube is 2 inches. So we have if we, the cross section of the tube, take note it's hollow. Then it has a 2 inches outside diameter and it has a wall thickness this one the wall thickness is 0.375 inch and this brass tube is connected to a steel tube so this is the steel tube okay and this steel tube has an inside diameter of 2 inch okay so therefore it has a diameter of 2 inch inside and a wall thickness of 0.25. So, it has a wall thickness of 0.25 inch. And they are connected by using a diameter, this one, a, a pin. And this pin has a diameter of 0.75 inch. So, the diameter of the pin is 0.75. Determine the shearing stress in the pin when the joint is carrying an actual load P of 10 kip. So if we have P, this one here, this is 10 kips or 10 kilopound. What is the shearing stress at the pin? But first, we have to identify what, where is the shear areas in the pin. So if we have our apply load P here, then obviously our shear area would be at this point and at this point. If you try to imagine, so this is prone to breaking, okay, this one is prone to failure. So therefore, this is considered as double shear, okay? So this one is a double shear. So 
If we try to solve that, we have P here is 10 kips. Okay, so we ident we first determine the area here, or I, I mean the the shear stress here. So from the formula, shearing stress is equal to V over A. Correct? Now, shear stress is equal to V. Our V here, that is the internal force. So it, since it is dub a double shear, we have um, our 10 kips is equal, would be equally divided into two areas. So we have V here and V here. Okay, so that is 10. Since it is in terms of kips, we multiply it by 1,000 so that our unit here is in terms of pound. Okay, over, since we have two shear area, so we divide it into two, that is um, 5,000 pound na lang, di ba? Over A, now our area of the pin, that is pi, diameter of the pin, that is 0.75 squared over... 4. Correct? So, our shear stress in the pin, that is 11,317. Then, the divisor has a unit of square inch. No. Correct? Since our 0.75 here is in terms of inch. So, therefore, we have unit of pound per square inch. Or, we can say that it's 11,317 PSI. Or, in terms of KSI, we can say it's 11.317 KSI. That is the stress or the shear stress experienced by the pin. Now, the, quest, the second question asks for the length of joint required if this pin here is removed and replaced by a glue. Okay? So, this one. This is a glue. A glue. Okay, so pag itatanggalin natin yung pin, then we um, use glue to connect the two tube instead. So in that case, we will have different um, shear stress. So in this problem, we are required to determine the length, the length of the glue joint by not exceeding the, the allowable shear stress of the joint, which is 250 PSI. Okay, now if we notice, if we apply glue to the outside surface of our brass tube and the inside surface of our steel tube, so this, the distribution of our glue here is this one. Okay, so kani, this, the entire outside surface of the brass tube, ito yung shear area natin. Okay, this is the shear area. The area or the surface on which the glue is being applied. Okay, so therefore, our area in that case is just equal to the length or the circumference of the circle times the length. Tama ba? So that is this one. This is the length of the circle times the length. This one. That is the area. We have the circumference of the circle times the length of the glue. So we use the shearing stress formula. That is the shear stress is equal to V over A. Okay? Now, take note, hindi siya double shear, ha? It is a single shear. We act this area as one. Okay? So, we have the shear stress. Now, the shear stress here it is the capacity of the glue. Okay? And that is 250 PSI, that is pound per square inch. And equals to our V, since it is 10 kips, tama? That is 10 kips or that is 10,000 pounds over our area that is the circumference of the circle over uh, times the L. Now, the circumference of the circle that is 2 pi r tama? times the L or that you can see that is pi d times L. Okay? So, we have pi. Now, the diameter, so it is the outside diameter of the brass and the outside diameter of the brass is equal to 2 inches. So, that is 2 inches. Times, we have the length. Since we are computing for the L or the length, then we retain the variable L. Okay, now our length here is equal to 6.366 inches. So, that's for example number 2. Now, let's 
compute or move to example number three. Okay, so we have another example. So we have a punch for making holes in steel plate is shown. A downward punching force of 150 kN is required to punch a 20 mm diameter hole in a steel plate that is 6 mm thick. Determine the average shear stress in the steel plate at the instant when the circular slug was turned away from the steel plate. So we have a punching machine, so this one. And this punch here is going to create a hole in our steel plate. Now the diameter of the hole is what? 20 mm. Okay, or 20 millimeter, and we have applied force 150 kilonewton on the punch. Okay, so take note that our steel plate here is 6 mm thick. So since we have a force of 150 kilonewton on the punch, so we have here a shear stress, okay, in the hole. Now, our problem here is where is the shear area? So our shear area here is the area parallel to the punching force which is 150 kN. So in this case our shear area is this one, no? The inside surface in the plate. Okay, this one here. Okay? So to compute for to compute for the area, we have area that is equal to the diameter of the hole since we have the diameter of the hole here. Okay? That is um, 20 mm. Then we have the thickness of the plate. Okay, so our area here that is the circumference of the hole times the thickness. Okay, this one. Okay, or this one. Draw it again. So the area here is the circumference, this one, times the thickness. Okay? So, our shear area is this one. Ito yung shear area natin. All throughout. So, we have shear stress and that equals to V over A. Okay? Now, shear stress, our V here, that is 150. Tama? But it multiplied by 1,000. So, 150,000 Newton over A, the area it's the circumference. When we see circumference, it's the length of the surface of the circle. And that is C is equal to pi times the diameter of the hole, which is 20. Correct? So that is pi times 20 times the thickness of the hole or the plate thickness that is this one. That is 6 mm. Therefore, if you multiply this in mm and this one is also in mm, then we have a millimeter squared. So our shearing stress here is equal to 397.887. Since the unit is in newton per square millimeter, then we have mega pascal. So this is now your shearing stress in the steel plate at the instant when the circular slug was turned away. So this is your answer. Okay, that's it for shearing stress. Thank you for listening.